Streetcars once ruled the streets of Los Angeles, stretching across the county from one corner to another. The yellow and red cars were largely created and subsidized by real estate developers who wanted to provide easy access transportation in LA, enticing people to buy homes in the sprawling suburbs. While some may call these trolleys, to those who know, they're streetcars. By 1911, there were two leaders in town, the yellow cars owned by Los Angeles Railway and the red cars owned by Pacific Electric Railway. But what happened to these front runners of the LA public transportation system? Was it just as Who Framed Roger Rabbit put it? Nobody's gonna drive this lousy freeway when they can take the red car for a nickel. Oh, well, they'll drive. They'll have to. You see, I bought the red car so I could dismantle it. Or was there more to the story? To find out, we spoke to historians and experts in the field, uncovering the past. My name is Ethan Elkind. I direct the climate program at UC Berkeley Law School's Center for Law, Energy, and the Environment. I also wrote the book Railtown on the history of LA's Metro Rail. The streetcars in LA really began in the late 1800s when electric trolley technology was invented. And prior to that, people were taking horses to get around or, or walking or horse-drawn carriages. So electric streetcars were a pretty revolutionary technology. And this was before automobiles were invented and in widespread use. So you saw major American cities, cities all around the world, move to adopt these electric streetcars. People loved how fast they went. They loved how quiet the ride was. They loved that there was no exhaust. 1901 was when Henry Huntington consolidated the Pacific Electric system. So that's really looked at as kind of the birth of the, the LA streetcar system that we romanticized to some extent. But the first electric streetcars were put in in the 1880s. We're starting our journey into streetcar history with Harvey Lehner. He's one of the founders of the Southern California Railway Museum, which is located in Paris, California. And he's written a book about the Pacific Electric Railway. Harvey, thank you for joining us. Thank you, glad to be here. So right now we are in front of the old Pacific Electric building. We are. It opened in 1903 and it was the heart of the Pacific Electric Railway system. Henry Huntington was a uh, landowner and one of the reasons that he wanted to build the railroad was to open up land sales between here and Long Beach. So there was a real estate motive involved in, in creating this electric railroad. It started out many times where the railroad was the only thing out there. And that's why when you look at a map of the streetcars now, you see it reaching all the way north and south across the county. They were essentially a loss leader. So real estate developers were happy to fund the streetcars because they knew it would boost their property values when LA County was a, you know, not that populated and mostly an agricultural uh, county. So they just laid down the streetcar lines as directly as they needed to be without having to worry about buildings. And so you had whole communities that we still have to this day that really were born out of the streetcar system. So think of like Huntington Beach, for example, uh, parts of Pasadena. They were all essentially streetcar subdivisions that really laid the foundation for what modern Los Angeles looks like today. So this building, it still has Pacific Electric lofts now on it. People live here now, but this entire building, which stretches this block, used to be solely devoted to the streetcars. Yes, yeah, so it was the general offices. The dispatching was done from here. All the accounting and administration. This was the heart of the Pacific Electric Railroad. It was an absolute success from the beginning. All over Southern California, the lines all came into here. The yellow cars were more of a sort of intercity kind of uh, system. So once you took the red cars in from a, a long distance out, you could then ride more locally around the, uh, with the yellow cars. The uh, red cars would come in off of Main Street, and off of, but they also came in off of San Pedro Street, came up an elevated structure. It fanned out into many station platforms. They came in through the back of the building okay. and came out this portal right here. And the word danger is still in the pavement so that people are aware that there is red cars coming out periodically entering Main Street to go to the various destinations in Southern California. So looking at a map of where we are right now, are we pretty much in the center of downtown LA? We are, we're just a little bit to the east of the very central part, but only by a couple of blocks. And what made it the center is that the Los Angeles Railway, the yellow cars used to cross there. That became a commercial area because where people are, stores open. Not until the 1950s, which was kind of after the days of the red cars, that Southern California really spread out. Uh, 
Uh, one example of this is that the last three car to, op to operate in LA was actually the downtown LA, the Long Beach line. And that closed up shop in 1961. But then that was the first line to get a modern uh, rail transit system in Los Angeles, the, the present day blue line that connects downtown uh, LA to Long Beach. And that opened up in 1990. So a lot of the new rail transit lines are built on the bones of those old streetcar lines. We've moved to another location in downtown LA, very close to the PE building is the subway terminal building. And what they have in common is they both were terminals for the red cars. They never really brought the Western District lines together with the Southern and Northern District lines. So if you're familiar with the LA Metro subway, you know you could switch underground to a few different trains, but back then you couldn't do that. You had to actually physically get out at one location, walk 10 minutes across downtown and get back on a different train. You did. What was the subway terminal building like? 100 years ago. If you were to go down there when the subway trains were running, you would go down a ramp and you'd be down at the platform level and there's the, the uh, subway tunnel ends and the tracks fan out to four separate uh, tracks for four separate station platforms. And that was the terminal. So Harvey has taken us to another location. We're on the perimeter of downtown Los Angeles. And just like the PE building, just like the subway terminal building, this has also been turned into housing, but it wasn't always housing. Before it was housing, it was the Toluca Yard. And Toluca Yard, that's the Toluca substation building. And that's where the, uh, the subway cars or the uh, red cars were serviced. And then the lines out to West Side and up to Glendale Burbank went up a hill and headed, its, headed out to the Western District. And tell us the story about when what you used to do here. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. Well, as we were, Arriving here, I thought to myself, gee, I used to climb up over the portal of the subway entrance and take pictures of the red cars coming in under me and going out under me. How old were you? Uh, I was about 17. We've moved on over to Brand in Glendale. Tell us about the significance of this boulevard. Well, it's a especially wide boulevard, and it's named after a gentleman named L.C. Brand. And Mr. Brand was a landowner and developer back in the early 1900s and in 1902 he started the construction of the los angeles and glendale electric railway company he decided he wanted to have a whole new entry into glendale and that new entry became brand boulevard and he built it wide so his electric railroad cars could be in the center and that there'd be a boulevard on each side of the railroad tracks and that's why the street is as wide as it is today. Once the personal automobile came around, it was really disruptive and people loved the idea of suddenly having their own vehicle to get around. The streetcars themselves never really made money uh, and they eventually began to lose money to the point where real estate developers sold them off. And at that point, the public sector and local government wasn't willing to step in and, and rescue them. So not only was it losing money, but people were getting very frustrated with it because a lot of these streetcars travel right in the medians of the streets, sharing the road with private automobiles. So all that traffic slowed down the streetcars. So the travel times went way down on the streetcars and people got frustrated, which created a kind of a, a vicious cycle and a kind of a, a death spiral in a way. So what would you say about the conspiracy that automobiles came in and destroyed the streetcar trolley system? So this is the who framed Roger Rabbit conspiracy theory. There is not evidence for this conspiracy theory. A lot of people want to believe that LA had this wonderful electric streetcar transit system. And the only way that anyone could have possibly have gotten rid of it is if it was a conspiracy by the auto industry and specifically General Motors, which had an interest in, uh, in the bus lines. But the fact is that the streetcar systems were losing money. They were getting very unpopular because of slow travel times. And the public was not willing to step in and rescue them. For more information about the history of Los Angeles streetcars, visit SoCalRailway.org.